Hello there brothers and welcome to your new Bible study. I'm glad you're joining again. Today we continue in Titus 2 and it's a beautiful verse. It's a verse of hope. It's a, it's a verse full of, of just uh, mercy of, uh, of God and the grace of Him, Jesus Christ. And I'll first uh, read to you the previous verses. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright and godly lives in this present age. While we wait for the blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. And then starts verse 14. Who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. This verse completes Paul's sentence of the significance of the grace of God mentioned in verse 11. This verse affirms that the same Jesus Christ who sacrificed himself on our behalf at Calvary is the one whose returning we are awaiting for. And second, according to this verse, Jesus' sacrifice had two objectives. A. The first is to rescue all those who believe in him, in him from sin or wickedness. And B. The second is to purify, meaning to free from sin and its consequences, a people he sets apart for himself. As children of God, we are both family and citizens of a new kingdom, because we have been freed from sin and its power. We have a zeal or passion to do good works. This reflects Ephesians 2 verse 8 and 9, which speaks of salvation being by grace through faith apart from works. Ephesians 2 verse 10 adds that we are created by Jesus for good works. Brothers, this sentence, taken in the totality of three verses, answers the question, then what? After we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. After we are set free from sin's bondage and saved from an eternity apart from God, the Holy Spirit actively starts transforming us as we study God's Word and apply it in our lives. While we wait expectantly for Jesus' return, we must not sit in our laurels, for God has a specific mission, objective and purpose for each of us. As we grow in our faith, we draw closer to God's heart in understanding, grow wiser, develop discernment, and that all propels us to reach out to the lost, to seek justice and to take care for others just as our masters do. Sorry, just as our master does. May each of us seek to accomplish what the Lord places on our hearts so that he will say, well done, my good and faithful servant, when we finally meet him face to face. May God bless us all.